about just what he's done. Start counting my blessings one by one. I sure don't deserve all that he's done for me, but I'll praise him forever through eternity. And I am amazed that he'd take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. He's given me breath and he's given me life. He saved my little soul from torment and strife. Jesus died on the cross just to show me his love. He's building my home in heaven above. And I am amazed that he'd take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. And I stumble as I journey this way But His mercies are new every day His grace is sufficient for every trial He amazes me more and more every mile He gave me His word in this precious old book It speaks to my heart every time I look loves me and helps me when I'm tempted to sin. Through Christ my Lord over Satan I win. And I am amazed that he take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. And I am Amazed that he take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so Each borrowed breath you give Every sacred day I live Lord, my declaration is I will worship you Every hour is a gift like a morning mist the passion of my heart is this I will worship you in the best and worst of times in all the lives Each borrowed breath you give, Jesus, I will worship you. Every dawn, Lord, help me see the hands of time move like a the days are long, but the years are brief, so I will worship. 
worship you in the best and worst of times brings all the good evening and welcome to jersey shore baptist church we're going to sing our first song for the night let's all stand as we turn to page number 279 in our hymn books, Never Give Up. Never be sad or desponding If thou hast faith to believe Grace for the duties before thee Ask of thy God and receive, never give up, never give up, never give up to thy sorrow, Jesus will bid them depart, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, sing when your trials are great. Trust in the Lord and take harm. What if thy burdens oppress thee? What thou thy life may be drear? Look on the side that is brightest. Pray and thy path will be clear. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up to thy sorrows. Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. Sing when your trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take harm. Never be sad or desponding. There is a moral for thee. Soon thou shalt dwell in its brightness. There with the Lord thou shalt be. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up to thy sorrows. Jesus will bid them depart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Sing when your trials are great. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Never be sad or desponding. Lean on the arm of thy Lord. Dwell in the depths of his mercy. Thou shalt receive thy reward. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up to thy sorrows. Jesus will bid them depart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Sing when your trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Amen. And let's open up the service in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for today, God. We just thank you for all that you do. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy to us, God. We're just thankful for another night. Uh, Lord, just be uh, watching and enjoying the service, God. I pray just be with the rest of the singing. I pray be with the time of prayer that we have, God. Lord, I just pray to answer our prayers, hear our requests, God. Uh, Lord, I pray to be a pastor as he preaches. I pray just fill him with your Holy Ghost power. Uh, Lord, we're just so thankful for how good you are. We pray to just have your hand on the rest of the service here tonight. Uh, we ask all this in the wonderful, holy, and precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right. We have the missionary letter for the Nunez family, missionaries to Venezuela. This is their first quarter letter, January through March of this year. And it reads, Dear Pastor and praying friends, thank you, dear friends, for your prayers. We are doing well. My, my wife is staying with my two daughters in Florida. They're taking all the precautions regarding the coronavirus. I'm also taking care of myself, but I am a little bit lonely. When I did not have my wife next to me before, it was kind of okay because it was planned. However, now with not being able to go to church and fellowship, preach, or go soul winning for more than a month, it is very unstable. It is a very unstable situation. 
The church was doing well. Everybody's taking care of themselves. We're keeping in contact by phone, which is all we can do, and we are praying for each other. Please pray for those who had left the country. Most of them have lost their jobs. They used to help their families here in Venezuela, but now they cannot even help themselves. The situation in Venezuela with the coronavirus is that if you get infected, there is not a decent hospital to go to. Another situation is with the food. We have food, but the prices are very high. People are having a difficult time with that. Another situation is gas. We used to have the cheapest gas in the world. Now it is, now it is the most expensive. It is $6 a gallon. We have to pay in dollars. I have, a half, I have a half tank of gas in my car. I do not drive my car. I am saving it for emergencies only. I do my shopping by foot. It is kind of risky, but that is all I can do for now. At the beginning, when people started talking about the coronavirus, I went to the store to do some shopping, and I wore a mask. When it was time for me to pay, the cashier was not wearing a mask. I asked her for her, I asked her, for her mask, and she said she was a Christian and was counting on the Lord for protection. Later, I heard about all the deaths of people everywhere. I said to myself, I trust the Lord too, but the Lord has given us wisdom. Let us use that wisdom to keep serving the Lord one more day, one more month, and one more year, protect yourselves and your family, and be an example for others. Let's keep praying for each other always. God bless you all. The church had 608 souls saved and two baptisms during the last three months. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's, he mentioned there, that's not a typo. 608 souls saved. I believe, Pastor, he went to Longview, right? And um, he's a, a soul-winning missionary and... Praise the Lord for that, for what he's doing there in Venezuela. Make sure you pray for the Nunez family. Uh, pray for him. Pray for his family that's in Florida. And pray that they can get reunited soon. Pastor. First country in South America. And now it's um, it's it's one of the worst countries. Uh, countries there as far as prosperity is concerned and um, that's what uh, that Cuba style socialism will bring you. Uh, anyway, I want to update you on the prayer list and um, just to remind you we've been we've been doing prayer meetings every day at, at noon uh, Monday through Saturday and so we've been updating this prayer list every um, every day. And so I'm not sure what was on your prayer list last week and what wasn't because, again, we're updating it all the time. Let me say this. If you have a prayer request that you want us to put on the prayer list, then go ahead and leave it. If, if it's something that you don't mind it being posted publicly, then leave it on the a comment section of Facebook Live um, or you can text it into me and I'll give you my, my cell phone number. It's 609 Seven zero five zero six nine seven, and if you text us the the prayer list, uh, the prayer request, or praise, or anything you want to let us know about, we'll make sure it, you know whatever it makes it on. If you want it, it'll make it on the prayer list. Um, also, I want to remind you about the response button on the website, JerseyShoreBaptist.com. Um, there's a response button on that front page, and that's a, a, a place for you to just let us know what's going on. Uh, if you're visiting with us, you can give us your information that way uh, if you want us to have it. If um, you make a decision or if you have a prayer request, anything like that, you can use that uh, button and, and you know, we'll, we'll be aware of whatever it is that uh, you want to let us know about. Um, on the prayer list, uh, the family of the week is, is Kimberly Butcher. Her and uh, Jonathan are going to be um, getting married here pretty soon, so be, be in prayer for them. Um, and I pray that all of this, you know, uh, this situation we're all going through is bad enough. Uh, but, you know, for people that are getting married, things like that, it's just a real tough situation. The graduations, Kyle um, Frick just graduated from, from boot camp at San Antonio, and nobody was able to go to the graduation last week. And uh, so it's especially tough this time of the year uh, for people graduating, people getting married, all that. And so if you would, just be in prayer for that. And, um, and uh, she's supposed to be going to the Philippines. They're going to be getting married in the Philippines um, soon. So just pray for them. And then we're praying for the Nunez family. Andres, he was a good friend of mine in college. And we're also praying for the primary Sunday school class. Stephanie actually had a, um, 
a Zoom class uh, with her kids, uh, the kids in her Sunday school class last night, and that was a blessing to the kids, and and it was just good for her to be able to get in touch and everything else. So we're we're evolving in this thing. We're learning how to get you know stay in contact with everybody and uh, through Zoom classes and through Facebook Live and all these other things, but pray especially this week for Stephanie Siliberto and the primary Sunday school class. The church of the week this week is Bethel Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's Pastor Dominic Penichetti. Um, just to uh, update you, the prayer list for those of you uh, who have not been with us for the noon Zoom prayer meetings, uh, it's it's on jerseyshorebaptist.com. And it's on the, it's on, there's actually three different places on jerseyshorebaptist.com you can find the prayer list, but it's on the front page. And so, but it's three pages long now. Uh, typically, it used to be just front and back, but now we added a third page. And the third page is primarily for information and prayer requests regarding this COVID 19 pandemic. But on the second page, which is our normal back page of our, our prayer bulletin, um, we have, you know, the same types of requests. We have the military, we have our community and our leaders, salvation requests, health requests, other requests, and cancer requests. And on the cancer requests, uh, we've been praying for a lady by the name of Amy. Amy's very sick. She has cancer, and she's also very sick right now. And uh, she has a, uh, a, a young daughter as well that she's got to take care of. So if you would, be in prayer for her. Jeff, um, and I'm just picking some names off of here. There are a lot of names on our, on our cancer list. But Jeff is a man down in South Carolina, and uh, he found out just a few weeks ago that he has lymphoma, and it's, it's pretty advanced. And so he's not doing very well right now. So if you would, pray for him. Pray for Philip and Kurt. I think they're both Larry's cousins. I'm not sure. Kurt is a uh, mentally imprisoned missing human. Uh, okay. And Philip is a cousin. Philip is a cousin. Kurt is a co-minister with Larry on the uh, prison ministry uh, that he's involved with. So uh, pray for Kurt and pray for Larry, or uh, pray for Philip, rather. And then we're, we're also praying for a man by the name of Tom Green. Uh, Pastor Sexton asks us to pray for him. Terry Reese is uh, Pastor Andy Reese out in Clementon. His brother uh, has cancer. Pray for him. And Pastor Weir in Atlantic City has cancer as well. And then there's two very small children that have cancer we just found out about recently, Lily Rose and Stevie. And again, they're all listed on your prayer list. Um, I updated also, Kyle Frick is now, he graduated boot camp in San Antonio, and he is now in at Shepherd Air Force Base, which is up in Wichita Falls up there uh, in the Panhandle area of Texas. And so pray for him. And we actually got to see him at Sunday school last week. He attended the Sunday school class. That was a, that was a blessing. We added this week to the health request, Sherry uh, Moore, that's uh, Patty's sister, and, uh, but Sherry's got some health needs coming up, and we'll get more specific when, we, when she gets some test results back, but just pray for Sherry. Pray for Shanice, uh, that's Travis Clark up in uh, Caldwell, New Jersey, that's his wife, and she's got a multiple, multiplicity of health issues as well, and so just pray for her. And then also pray for Carol Bull. Carol Bull was in Galloway Health Center. Now she's in the hospital, and um, uh, she's having kidney trouble. So pray for her. Pray for Gail Spangenberg. And uh, I think the rest of these requests uh, have been on there for quite a while. On, uh, down in the other request, Phil Jr. is traveling to Arizona on Sunday evening. Uh, he's leaving Texas, and he's going to Arizona on Sunday evening with a crew of people from his church, and they're going to be pulling a trailer uh, full of food and supplies for an Indian reservation. I don't know if that's politically correct. What am I supposed to say? Native American, Native American reservation in Arizona. And um, so anyway, but they're be bringing the supplies out there, and they can't, they can't even enter the reservation. They just have to go to the entrance, drop the stuff off, and it's, I don't know, it's a nine or ten hour drive from where they're going. We're gonna, they're going to be driving through the night because apparently this uh, Native American reservation is having a really tough time finding uh, supplies. And so if you would, pray for that. And also their church, First Baptist of Cottondale, is going to be having their, their opening this Sunday. They're having a church two church services Sunday morning, so pray for that. Pray for Larry Gibbs. Larry Gibbs has the homeless ministry uh, Camille and Alice Mary from our church work with him, and uh, he gets uh, food from a, 
uh, a convenience store, I'll just leave it at that without naming names, that um, supplies him with breakfast sandwiches when they get out of code. And you know they freeze them and then they give them to him and then he gives them to the homeless people. However, um, the, the convenience store that they were dealing with uh, had a few cases of COVID-19 at their store and so they closed the store um, and you know they're cleaning the store up and they're trying to test everybody to see which of their employees had it. So anyway, the store's closed and he ran out of his food source. So pray for him, he's trying to find some food so he can bring it down to Atlantic City. Also on there, there's an unspoken request that's new for Nancy. Um, Nancy's a member of First Baptist Cottondale. She's going through some family things. And so if you would, pray for her. Uh, on the COVID-19, the third page of your prayer list, uh, there's a guy by the name of JP. That's John Pierre from New York City. Uh, he was a student at Vision Baptist College. His mom has the virus, and he's kind of high risk. So pray for him that he doesn't get it. Pray for his mom that she gets better. Also pray for Katrina. Uh, it's a friend of Ralph's, and she tested positive, so pray for her. Um, we have an update on Brooke. Uh, Isan gave us this request. Brooke uh, was in really, really bad shape. She was in a coma, and now she's in a long-term care facility, so I guess that's a step up. It's better than what it was, but she's still not out of the woods yet. Also pray for Cookie and Tom. They tested positive. Uh, that's uh, Kelly Spangenberg's uh, sister and brother-in-law, I think, I, or brother and sister-in-law. I'm not really sure about that. But anyway, pray for them. Pray for Jesse. Uh, that's Jesse, um, Bob Fenton's grandson. He's going for a, a checkup. He's got Morphan syndrome. It doesn't have anything to do with COVID, but he's got Morphan syndrome. And, and they have to test him about every uh, three or four months or so to see if his aorta is stretching. And so he goes, uh, he's due for his, his regular checkup on Thursday, but just they're very, very concerned about him. So pray for him. Uh, also, Alice Mary brought this request in. The Allentown Rescue Mission and Sarah, her daughter Sarah, and her husband Dave work there. Three people have tested positive there. And, you know, rescue mission, like a nursing home, whatever, it's, it's going to spread very easily and probably quickly there. So pray that Sarah and David don't get it. Um, pray for them. And also pray for Kayla Clark. Kayla Clark had her, her appendix taken out today. Uh, so just pray uh, for her. I think she's back home already. She went into the hospital this morning, and she's supposed to be getting out tonight, uh, Brother Mike told me. So pray for her. Pray also um, on the, the it's, it's under miscellaneous request. Uh, we're, we're praying for all the, all the essential workers, and, you know, a number of our church family are essential workers. We're praying for Isan and Melanie at the bank and, and, um, and Matt and Sue and Tina uh, who work in grocery stores, and Keith is a truck driver, Elijah Metz is an essential worker, Rich is down at the convention center working down there. So pray for all them, but also pray for Chris Hogan's workplace. They had some people that tested positive there, uh, six people. Now, he's not working there. He's working at home, but pray for his workplace. They had a number of people working there. And then also pray for wisdom for the churches that we get back together uh, quickly, soon, safely, and all that. Uh, pray for the parents and kids uh, at home. Uh, Brother Bob asked for prayer for the safety team. Pray for our health care workers, a uh, number of people from our church, Joanne, Ann, Joe, uh, Sarah, Stephanie, Kimberly, Linda, um, uh, Linda Dempsey, uh, Paige, which is Bob Fenton's granddaughter. Uh, and then there's other names on here as well that are not part of our church, but these people are all nurses and health care workers. Pray for them. Pray for the hospitals. Pray for our police. Donna Higby is our, our police chief, and uh, Mike Peretti comes to the church. He's a state trooper. P pray for him. Tim is Bob's uh, son-in-law from Mays Landing. He's a policeman in Mays Landing. That's Jesse, uh, Jesse's father. So pray for, pray for them. Pray for our hospitals, that they don't run out of equipment. And, um, and by the way, we have a lot of praises listed on here as well of people that have gotten better. And so um, not everybody dies. And, you know, some people have gotten better and they're doing great now. And so we praise the Lord for that. All right. So what I'm going to do, um, obviously what we normally do is we all gather around and pray here at the altar. Um, let, let me just see if, was there any uh, prayer requests came in? Do you know of? No. Okay. Um, and we have any prayer requests in here that anybody knows about? Okay, so well, I'll just pray a general prayer uh, for all of us. I, I won't be ultra specific for time's sake and naming all the names that are on this prayer list. 
Um, but the prayer list is, is it's there. It's on jerseyshorebaptist.com, right on the front page. You'll see prayer list. Please check the prayer list. It's updated daily, uh, except for Sunday. That's the only day we don't update it. We update it every other day. So you can see the new names on there. And then it's also on pastorerickson.com, which is our daily devotional blog website. It's right on the right side of that blog. You'll see the prayer list there. You can get it there. But please, you know, we usually give these prayer lists out. You can access it right on your phone or on your computer. And so be checking over and see how your church family is doing. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you so much, God, for the privilege we have to gather together and pray. And, and God, we were talking today or yesterday in the noon Zoom prayer meeting, that this this is not the same situation. Although we we are hindered from gathering together as a church family and meeting in one location, uh, we are not commanded at this time not to preach the gospel like people in other times, Christians in other times and in other countries have been commanded not to preach in Christ's name. That's not the case here. We are able to do this. We're, we're encouraged to do it safely with a minimum number of people here in the building. And we're encouraged to uh, get people involved via live feeds and Zoom and all these other things. And God, we're looking forward to the day, hopefully very soon, when we can all gather together again. And uh, But Lord, we know it's going to take some time. We do pray and we're sensitive to the fact that there are many, many people uh, in particularly in our area, but really throughout the world that have died and many people are still sick. And I, the report about the, the one nursing home where there was, I think, 75 people who, who died in one nursing home. And that's, that's a tragedy. And uh, this is serious. It may not be uh, quite as bad as some of those early forecasts were where they talked about millions of people dying in America but it's still bad, and there's still a lot of people dying. There's still a lot of people getting sick, and it's, you know, it's kind of burdening our health system, and, and it's crippling our economy, and it's hindering your people from being able to fellowship and enjoy each other and to edify and encourage and uplift each other, at least in the sense where they can do it face-to-face. -face. We're thankful for this technology that we have and that we can gather together that way and we can we can see each other via these live feeds and communicate with each other through all a variety of different means we're thankful also god that you have been meeting our needs and you've been taking care of us and that uh, your people have been giving and, and god we're just thankful for all of those things but we do pray god uh, you know, some some have said, "Boy, this is so exciting." Many of the things we we hope that they continue as far as uh, you know the way we do church. And uh, I'm looking forward to going back to the way we used to do church. And again, we can learn some things, and we can edify and add to our services with technology. But uh, there will be nothing that will replace just gathering together in your house and fellowshipping one with another. And we're looking forward to the day that we can get back to doing that again. And we hope it will be soon. But in the meantime, God, help us to make lemonades out of lemons and help us to do the best that we can and try to minister as effectively as we can. And we do pray that you would bless this meeting tonight. We pray uh, for the Bible study in Luke chapter 21. God, help us to learn, help us to be edified and strengthened. I pray you'd be with Justin as he's going to be doing uh, his uh, class with the teenagers via Zoom. And uh, if there's any teenagers out there that want to get connected to that and they need to know how, I pray they would connect with us here through Facebook and, and we'll get them connected. Father, I pray, God, you'd bless these needs on the prayer list. And there's so many. We pray for Kimberly. She's our, our family of the week. We pray for Brother Nunez. We pray for our primary Sunday school class, Stephanie Silberto. I'm really thankful, God, for her faithfulness through this whole thing. And she's been connecting to every Zoom meeting and she's been um, working at uh, doing the junior church videos and she's been helping out in a variety of different ways, including her Sunday school class. And I pray you'd bless her. I pray for uh, Anthony, her son down there in in uh, in Texas there in Fort Worth with the Marine Corps. I pray for Lexi, uh, God. I pray for uh, Cece also and Roman. And God, I just pray you'd uh, watch over and bless and protect her family. 
We pray for uh, Brother Panachetti down there at Bethel, and I pray for the extended Philadelphia Panachetti family, and that would probably include Joe White, and, uh, and, and uh, we pray for Christian, and we pray for Dom Jr., and, and their churches. Just bless them and keep them safe, God. We pray for Brother Kyle in the, in the Air Force, Lord. We're thankful that he's able to communicate back with us. He's really just as much a member of the church and a participant in the church now um, than, uh, than he, as he was before, even though he's geographically in Texas because he can watch just like the people you know, down the street from us can via live stream. And So, Lord, we pray you'd be with him and bless him. We pray for Amy on the cancer list, Lord. We pray for Jeff down in South Carolina. Philip and Kurt, Lily and Stevie, we pray for Tom Green, Terry Reese, we pray for Pastor Weir, so many names on there. We pray for all these health requests, especially Sherry, Lord, and uh, Shanice, who are new to our list, and Miss Carol uh, in the hospital, bless her, and I pray for Gail, and God, all these other lists, I think about George McGinnis, who had his leg amputated, and, and so many other things that are going on there. I pray for Phil's trip to, to Arizona, God that you give him, and Caitlin or Caitlin's going too, give them traveling mercies, God, as they travel through the night, help them to stay awake, and uh, God, they're going to have a full day, they're going to do two church services in the morning, another church service at night, and then they're going to travel uh, through the night to, to be a blessing to some people who have need, and God, I pray you'd be with him and bless him, and that's an exciting thing, I, I almost envy him, I wish I was uh, part of that trip, but God, we pray you'd bless him, bless First Baptist for coordinating all that. And bless even some of the churches up here. I've talked about helping them out, and that's a blessing. And God, we pray for Brother Gibbs, that he would get the food that he needs uh, for the homeless ministry. We pray for Nancy also. And God, we do ask that you would be with Cookie and Tom, who now uh, are added to the list. We're thankful, God, that Brooke is doing better, but she's not out of the woods yet. Uh, we pray for JP, uh, Lord, uh, whose mom has the virus. We pray for the mom as well, but we pray for him. He keep him from getting it. We pray for Katrina. And uh, we also pray, God, for Allentown Rescue Mission. And, uh, Lord, we pray you'd bless uh, Dave and Sarah. Keep them from getting this disease. Pray for Jesse's upcoming appointment, God. Bless him. And I pray um, not only would they fi find that his situation didn't get worse, but I, I pray they'd find it, got, it had gotten better, that he's improved. And, Lord, we pray for Kayla also, God. Um, and Lord, just heal her up. I know they kind of expedite things now. They get you in and get you out of the hospital, but I pray she heals well, and I pray she doesn't develop an infection. And God, I just pray you'd be with Brother Mike and Miss Carla and uh, the rest of the Clark families. They minister to her, but just bless her, Lord. And Father, we also pray for uh, Chris Hogan's workplace, and uh, Lord, I know a lot of people tested positive there. We pray you'd just uh, just bless that place, Lord. Bless Chris's friends, no doubt. You, you'd just be with them, Lord. I pray the people that got the virus would heal quickly. I pray that the uh, people that don't have it wouldn't get it. Uh, we just pray, God, you'd have your hand over all this stuff going on. Pray for all our churches, Lord. We've got this situation going on with the church in Rio Grande this Sunday. I pray, God, that the governor would allow Rio Grande to be able to have their drive-in service. Lord, it doesn't seem like there's any danger whatsoever in having a car parked in a parking lot listening to a, a, a loudspeaker that's, that's uh, you know, broadcasting the word of God. Uh, but God, I just pray that our government would make sense. I know the government is trying to be careful, but I pray they would just do a sensible thing and allow this church, this concession, and allow them to come in. Even though the church doesn't need the government's permission, the church is guaranteed permission by the Constitution and commanded by God. But, uh, Lord, I just pray that you would just diffuse this situation that's brewing uh, there, and I pray nobody would have to go to jail on Sunday. And so, God, we just pray you bless Brother McLeod. We pray also for our health care workers, Lord, Joanne and Ann and Joe and Sarah and Stephanie and Kimberly, Linda, Paige, Dawn, Christian, Tiffany, Mercedes, Sarah, Wayne, April, and Kayla, Jamie, and Tammy. Be with Donna Higby and all our Galloway police. Pray for Mike Peretti, Lord, keep him safe. Pray for Tim and Mays Landing. God, we pray for our hospitals, Mainland and Atlantic City Medical Center, Shore Memorial. We pray, God, for the convention center. They're up and running now. Be with Brother Rich as they, um, as uh, Rich is there working, and he's, he's working a lot of hours. I pray you give him the strength and energy he needs, and I pray you'd protect him most of all from that virus. I think Elijah also is working there. I pray you'd bless him and uh, keep him safe. 
And then, Father, we pray for the equipment, the masks, the gloves, the ventilators. Pray that all that would be in place. We pray for Adam, the Figaro family, Chris, Stephanie, and Jerry. Uh, Lord, just uh, Stephanie's family and Jerry, just bless them. God, these people need to be saved. And I pray, God, that you would speak to hearts in a great way during this pandemic, that people would, would realize they need something bigger than themselves. The doctors don't have the, the answers. The government certainly doesn't have the answers. But God, you have the answers. And God, I pray that people would see that and pray that people would be convicted of their sin and they would trust Christ. I pray that even tonight, somebody listening to this broadcast would, would recognize their need for a Savior, God. Please, God, Holy Spirit, we pray you'd speak to hearts. And again, God, we just ask for safety for our, all our essential workers, God. Just keep them safe. And, uh, Lord, people that have to be out there in the workforce, God, we just pray you'd bless them in a great way. And, uh, God, we pray that uh, this thing continues to get better and not get worse. And so, Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, that you're a great God. You're a great God. You're a great God before the pandemic. You're a great God today. Uh, God, I don't, I, I don't believe you caused this. You allowed it. And you're going to do something through it. And you're going to work it and all that surrounds it together for good um, and for our benefit and for people to get saved. And we're thankful for that. And we're looking for the good things that you're going to do through this. And so, Lord, we love you. We pray you bless the rest of the service now. For it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our next song. Let's turn in our hymn books to page number 12. Page number 12, He Touched Me. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Since I met the blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Amen. We're going to sing our next song, which is page number 113, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. My soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Thy 
my wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless and since he bids me seek his believe his word and trust his grace I'll cast on him my every hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share, till from our peace goes lofty high, I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to see the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. A couple of announcements coming soon, our early service at 8.30 a.m. This service is in addition to our 11 a.m. service and will be open to anybody, but specifically geared for seniors and singles as there will be no nursery or junior church for that service. We'll be implementing this in an effort to increase our ability to social distance. So that's an early service coming soon at 8.30, and uh, just stay tuned for more information on that. This Friday, we'll be having our Victorious Thinking for a Sound Mind seminar by Pastor Joe Basso. That'll be at 7 p.m. You can register, register for that class on our website, jerseyshorebaptist.com. There's a link on there that says Victorious Thinking for a Sound Mind. You can fill out the registration on there to get a link sent to you for that uh, seminar this Friday at 7 p.m. Or you can join us via Facebook Live. Noon, our noon Zoom prayer meeting is every day, Monday through Saturday um, at 12 o'clock. If you're interested in joining us for the noon Zoom prayer meeting, I encourage you to reach out to Pastor, Pastor or uh, Sammy Erickson or Sammy Mears for, um, for details on that, and they can get you the, Zoom, uh, the noon Zoom prayer meeting link for that. And uh, also, Sunday school and church services, I want to encourage you, if you're not part of a Sunday school class, to reach out to one of the Sunday school teachers. Um, you can reach out to Brother Paul. He teaches the Berean class. Brother uh, Larry Hamilton reaches, does the, the um, Mary class there on, on Sunday mornings. I believe he does it through Facebook Live. Um, you can reach out to me if you're a single college career uh, you can reach out to me. We can get you um, linked up to do a, for our Sunday school, and the ladies, I believe, also have a class, and we want to encourage you to get um, connected through Sunday school. There's different activities that will be done. Some teachers have different things that they do throughout the week, and it's important to stay connected with your Sunday school class and with the church, and you can find all that information on our website, jerseyshorebaptist.com. And before we pray for our offering, just want to remind everyone, you can go on to our website, jerseyshorebaptist.com, and you can click on the giving link right on there and put in your information for your offering, or you can send the amount you'd like to give to our text-to-give number, 609-831-3396, or you can mail in your offering to 216 South Wrangleboro Road, Galloway, New Jersey, 08205. And again, all of this information is right on, right on our website, jerseyshorebaptist.com. Let's pray for the offering, and we'll continue with the service. Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for your love for us. We thank you, God, that we can worship you, Lord. And God, we pray, Lord, that you would be with the prayer meeting and with the, the Bible study, Lord. I pray, God, that you would be with pastor as he preaches, Lord. I pray, God, that you would fill him with your Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, I pray that we'd be attentive to your word. I pray that your word would change us from the inside out. God, I pray, Lord, for 
those that give. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you meet the needs of our church, meet the needs of our missionaries. Lord, thank you, Brother Nunez. I pray, God, that you would bless him, Lord, and his ministry there in Venezuela. And God, I just pray, Lord, that you be with the rest of the service. And God, we love you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, we're going to be in Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 21, and I don't think we're going to get very far into Luke chapter 21. My plan originally was to do um, up to verse 19, and um, but it doesn't look like we're going to get that far. Uh, probably uh, we're only going to cover the first four verses. Now, um, just by way of a fast reminder, the context of this portion of Scripture that we're in, uh, and we've been in for a little bit, for quite a while now, is it's the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. He has been teaching in the temple. This is, uh, chronologically speaking, after the triumphal entry, yet it's before the, the upper room in the Last Supper. And um, back in chapter 20, Jesus answered, he's been answering questions. The Pharisees are uh, running out of time, and, and they're the Pharisees, scribes, religious leaders, the, the Sadducees, they're, they're trying to trip Jesus up, um, and they're trying to get him to say something that's going to get them, get him in trouble. And they ask him three questions uh, in chapter 20. The first question was uh, regarding his authority. By what authority do you do these things? And he replies with another question. He asks them um, about the authority of John the Baptist. And they, they wouldn't give him a straight answer about John the Baptist because they were afraid that, um, they were afraid that uh, if they said, well, John the Baptist, his authority came from God, then Jesus would say, why didn't you listen to him? And um, if, you, if they were to say, well, G, you know, John the Baptist didn't have any authority, he was, he was operating completely on his own, um, he, he knew that they were afraid to say that too because the people all revered John. So that was one of the questions they asked him. The second question regarded tax money and, um, you know, should we pay taxes or, or shouldn't we? And, you know, they thought they had him with that one too. They said, well, if, if he says, yes, we should pay taxes, the people will be angry because the people hated the Roman government. If he says we shouldn't pay taxes, the Roman government will be mad at him and, and they will accuse him of starting to, uh, you know, starting a rebellion against the government. And so, but he, he just simply answers them whose image and superscription is on this coin. And he says, render unto Caesar, and it was Caesar's image, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and under God the things that are God. Uh, gods, meaning that whatever we owe the government, um, we, we pay to the government. Whatever we owe to God, we pay to God. And then finally, the last question was kind of a roundabout, crazy way of um, dealing with the resurrection. And the Sadducees asked them that question. They didn't believe in the resurrection. Now, after silencing all of their arguments, Jesus warns the people about these religious leaders. And that's kind of where I want to go to start out. We're going to be dealing with chapter 21. But let's just, you know, look at what he said to these religious leaders in verse 45 of chapter 20. Um, you know, he warns the people. He's, he's dialoguing with these religious leaders, but then he addresses the people. And uh, he particularly says something about the way they treated widows in this passage of Scripture. And that's going to tie us into Luke 21 and, and verses 1 through 4. But look what it says. It says, Then in the audience of all the people, he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts. Notice this, which devour widows' houses, and for a show make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation. Now, I shared with you last week that the parallel passage to those 
few verses there at the end of Luke chapter 20. You find that in Matthew's gospel. And there it's a whole chapter of rebuke for the Pharisees. But here, just three verses, but it particularly, he talks about, they say they devour widows' houses. In other words, they, they take things from widows who can't afford to give them. And that's really how the, the passage starts in chapter 21 and verses 1 through 4. Um, and, and by the way, the whole, uh, I, I entitled this chapter, Final Teachings on Finances and Future Things, because he's going to use this passage of Scripture that takes place in the temple in verses 1 through 4, dealing with this widow woman giving her two mites. He's going to use that. He's going to launch into a description of the ornate beauty of the temple and how someday the temple is going to be destroyed and it gets into future events from there. But I, I called it final teaching because here we are, we're in the last week of Jesus' life, uh, earthly life. Jesus, you know, he, he died, he rose again after three days, and, and he's alive forevermore. But, um, but as far as his earthly ministry is concerned, pre, pre-crucifixion, uh, now again, he'll be on the scene, he'll be teaching some more post-resurrection, but for right now, this is it. And um, so anyway... And the first thing we're going to see here is a pronouncement about the finances of a widow. He commends this widow woman, and he compares her to um, to everybody else that gave that day at the temple. And uh, but let's before we do this, let's just go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless this study. And this is again probably the, the only four verses we'll get to today. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you for the book of Luke. Thank you for his unique perspective on the events that took place in the life of the Lord and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ while he was on the earth. God, we pray you'd give us wisdom regarding uh, rightly understanding these these verses. And uh, Father, also being able to make um, intelligent application as to how we can apply the interpretation of this passage of scripture to our lives today. And so, Lord, I pray you'd help us to see the truth that you want us to see here. What about this widow was so commendable? And what about the others that gave that day, and many gave more than the widow? Uh, What about those people that was not commendable or not as commendable, uh, we should say, as this widow woman? And so, Lord, teach us what we need to learn from this passage of Scripture. Teach me, God, what I need to learn from this passage of Scripture. We love you. We'll give you all the, the uh, glory, Lord, for anything good that comes out of the, the study of the Word of God. And we pray that you'd bless for it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Hey, we didn't read it yet. Let's read it. And uh, these four verses. And he, it's Jesus, looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And so Jesus, in, in a, he's positioned in a place where they had a box it's kind of like the way we're doing it right now. We used to take up an offering. You know, you had those ushers eyeballing you as they go down the aisle, you know, uh, daring you not to put something in the offering plate. Well, back in this New Testament time period of the temple, they had a box in the back, a treasury, and people would, on their way out or maybe on their way in, they would put money in the treasury. And um, and so we're doing that now. We, we have a offering plate that we just kind of stuck on the, uh, the, the baptistry over there, and, um, you know, sometimes people during the week, they'll, they'll drop an offering off, and we'll just put it in there, and sometimes something will get mailed in, and we'll drop it off in there, and, uh, but we're not collecting money, and then some people, are, of course, are giving online, but here, Jesus is observing these rich men, at first, giving their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor widow Casting in thither two mites, and we'll explain what that is in a minute. And he said, of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. Now, they, she didn't give more in denomination, whatever. She didn't give more money than they gave, but she gave more as far as a total percentage than they gave. And it says, for all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury or poverty hath cast in all the living 
that she has. And so let me give you some things about this, uh, this, uh, this, these four verses, this pronouncement about the finances of a widow. And again, uh, the next section uh, of the, um, the next section that beginning in verse 5, we call a prophecy regarding the future of the world. So it's kind of a, quite a transition that we're going we're gonna to see uh, as we get to the rest of the chapter. It starts dealing with a lot of uh, end time events. But uh, let, let's, let's see some things from this passage of Scripture. First of all, let me say that only Mark and Luke share this event with us. Matthew doesn't record it. It's only found in two of the Gospels. Now, we were kind of, for a couple of um, moments there, you know, we were seeing all three Gospels carrying. But when it gets to the story of the widow's might, Matthew is silent regarding it. Mark and Luke give us the story. And in this story, Jesus is about to leave the temple and speak to his disciples about future events, which is going to begin in verse 5. And by the way, Matthew will pick back up there. Matthew chapter 24 is the parallel passage, along with Mark chapter 13, uh, dealing with these future events, what they call the Olivet Discourse. Um, But Jesus is near the treasury inside the temple. He's watching the people give. And let me just say, Jesus still is able to see the amount that we give. He sees what you give. He sees what I give. He still sees the amount, by the way, that we have left after we give. And that's really what this passage of Scripture is all about. It's not what you give. It's not what she, this widow woman, gave. It's what she had left over and what these other rich men had left over. Though they may have given much more than this widow woman gave, they had a lot lot more left over than she had left over. And Jesus comments that many rich people gave much into the treasury, but what he didn't mention was how much the rich people had left after they had given. We know that they gave of their abundance. On the other hand, the Lord tells us that this poor widow woman who only gave two mites, and a mite is just this, it's the smallest coin, the the most uh, least value valued coin uh, in that time period. It was a little copper coin, and it was worth about an eighth of a cent. So she had a total of a quarter of a cent worth of offering that she had given. But Jesus said she had given all her living. It says she gave of her penury or her extreme poverty. Um, And he commends her for that. On the other hand, the Lord tells us that the poor widow who only gave these two small mites, um, you know, she gave not a lot of money. Um, she, she didn't give a lot, but she gave all that she had. And she had nothing left over after she gave because she gave all her living. And um, notice also she gave, and I want you to keep this in mind too, because sometimes uh, you may someday or somebody you know may use this as an argument as why I will not give my money to the church. She gave the money to a corrupt religious system. Jesus did nothing but denounce this corrupt religious system. Matter of fact, he he rebuked the religious system for devouring widows' houses. But Jesus said specifically that she gave to God. So even though she was giving her money to this corrupt religious system, this temple, said she gave the money to God. And sometimes, um, you know, we will, uh, we don't like to give because we claim that we can't trust how the money's being used. Well, he, you couldn't trust how the money was being used here, but Jesus still commended this woman for giving to God. And so just something to think about. Notice Jesus had just spoke about how the Pharisees had taken advantage of the widows. Now, Whenever we teach on this passage of Scripture, we tend to focus on the subject of giving. But I I, I do not think Jesus is focusing on the giving aspect. If the focus were on giving, Jesus would have only commented on what each party gave. But Jesus didn't stop with what they gave. He went on to mention what they had left. And so this passage of Scripture isn't about giving, even giving as a percentage. And by the way, we're not under law giving anymore. We're under grace giving. The passage is really about total surrender. The rich gave, 
And they certainly gave more than the woman did. But the rich had a lot left over. The widow didn't give much, but she had nothing left over, which means she surrendered everything. You know, we sing the song, I surrender all. And I always get convicted. We don't, we don't usually sing invitations. You know, I, I used to be involved in a church where we sang the invitation song. And we would do different songs. Sometimes we'd sing Just As I Am. Sometimes we would sing I Surrender All. And I always got convicted when we sang I Surrender All because I would say to myself, I haven't surrendered all. Um, you know, have any of us surrendered all? I, listen to the words, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Why do we sing that? When, when we haven't forsaken all our worldly pleasures. Take me, Jesus, take me now. How about that song, Is Your All on the Altar? Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control? You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Uh, let me ask you the question. I'll ask the same question to myself. Is your all on the altar? Again, this is about total surrender. This woman, she gave everything to the Lord. And, and do we give everything? And again, we're not talking about monetary giving here, although that's the illustration that Jesus uses to teach this principle. We're talking about, does Christ have all of us? Does the Holy Spirit control us wholly? That's what being filled with the Spirit is. It's not, it's not that you, you know, find a, a pocket somewhere that's got more Holy Spirit and you grab it and take it. No, it's does the Holy Spirit have all of you? Are you surrendered to the Holy Spirit? Are you yielded to the will of God? And I want to give you some passages of Scripture. This is why it's going to take a little bit longer than, um, than I, you know, that I would normally like to take on this. But look at Genesis chapter 20, uh, 22. Yeah, Genesis chapter 22. Look here. We're talking about total surrender. I want to give you some biblical examples of, to of total surrender. Now, this is a familiar story. Many of you are familiar with it, but some of you may not be. And so let's, let's read it. In chapter 22 and verse 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass after this, these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom you love. And by the way, Abraham loved Isaac. Abraham waited a long time for Isaac. God promised Isaac to Abraham, and it took 20 years for that promise to be fulfilled. And now the promise has been fulfilled, and he loves Isaac, whom thou lovest. And get thee into the land of Moriah. By the way, Moriah, that's that same mountain where Mount Calvary is. That's uh, where Christ is going to be crucified. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So God tells Abraham, go take your son, go up to Mount Moriah, and offer your son as a sacrifice. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. Notice what Isaac says. Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb uh, for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, Notice this, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. By the way, what he was saying is, is God is going to not provide himself like he's going he's to bring a lamb for us. No, God's going to provide himself. He is going to be the one that's going to sacrifice himself. And they came to the place which God had told him of. 
And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, notice this, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now, notice this, I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. But he lifted up his hand. He was going to kill his son. And God says, now I know that you fear God. Now, I don't know, to be very honest with you. Matter of fact, I could probably tell you that I would not be able to sacrifice one of my children or grandchildren if God asked me to do it. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you that Abraham was totally surrendered. He was completely surrendered to God. He loved God more than he loved his own son. And he probably loved his own son more than anything else in the world. But he loved God more. And if God told him to kill his son, he was going to do it. And God held his hand up. He said, okay, I, I know now that you love me, that you fear me. But th this is what I'm talking about, total surrender. And sometimes we just flippantly use those phrases out. Oh, I'm surrendered to God. I'm yielded to God. I'm in God's will. All of that, I, I don't know. Total surrender. Are we yielded? Look over in um, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. And look at verse 8. We'll get to the couple of New Testament passages in a minute. But in 1 Kings chapter 17, notice this. And the word of the Lord came unto him, and this is Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell, thee, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee. Notice this, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as, as, he was going to as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Now, if just reading what we've read, you don't know the whole story, but this is a time of extreme famine, three years, no rain. And she's out of food. And she's got this last bit left, and she's ready to die. But yet, watch what happens here. Um, and go and fetch it. So he's, he said... Uh, Bring me, I pray, the immortal bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal. I just got this little bit of flour in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, notice this, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me, notice this, and my son, that we may eat it and that I may go uh, and, and die. Eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But watch this but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after that, um, and after make for thee and for thy son. He's got this little tiny bit left, and he said, no, no, you're going to take care of me first. Now, again, this is all a test, but I'm just saying, and this woman did it. She listened to the, the word of God, and she did what the, what, what the man of God told her to do. She was totally surrendered. Look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. We're talking about people in the Bible who really didn't care about themselves, their own situations, or whatever. They cared more about what the Lord wanted them to do. And, and I'm, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to me because I'm not here. Matter of fact, I don't think any of us here in America are here because here in America, we're very spoiled. God may have to take some more things away from us before we get to the place where we really realize what's important. Look at Acts chapter 4. Look at verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Notice this. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So here in the first century, New Testament, post-Pentecost, early church, they had all things common. They were willing to sell their stuff so that everybody could have their needs met. And watch the example uh, given here. 
and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and grace, great, great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, and this is the same Barnabas that later went with the apostle Paul on the first missionary journey, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So again, you have a guy completely surrendered, but you also have, um, you know, the first century church in general had this, this attitude about them. And now, last uh, passage here regarding this. In 2 Corinthians, I'm in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, Paul is collecting an offering for the poor saints at Jerusalem. They were impoverished, and um, they, they, they lacked, they needed help. And he went from church to church throughout Asia Minor and throughout Europe, uh, you know, in Greece where they were, Macedonia and Achaia, and Galatia, and they collected this offering. And now he, he comments about the churches in Macedonia, which was Thessalonica, Berea, and Philippi. He said, moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God. He's saying, I want to point this out to you. Um, bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, again, Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, how that in a great trial of afflictions, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty. In other words, they begged us that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. And so here you had a, a group of people, very poor people, but they insisted that Paul take this money to give to these saints at Jerusalem. They surrendered all. They totally surrendered. And so, um, listen, we, we need to think about this. I mean, are we there? I mean, we live in, in poverty, um, prosperity full America. And even this, you know, this coronavirus is stripping some stuff away. But I, I, I'm not wishing for this. I like being comfortable. Uh, I like being warm. I like being dry, having a roof over my head. I like being full. But maybe God's got to take some of those things away from us in order to get us to really realize what's eternally important. Notice in um, Colossians, um, let, me, let me go there. Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 5. I thought that was the last verse I was going to give you, but I lied. Not on purpose, though. I just uh, was mistaken. Colossians, General Electric Power Company. Bear with me. I got a new Bible here. I got to break it in. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, for you are dead. Dead. Notice that. You are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Um, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And then in Galatians chapter 2, I have this one quoted here. Uh, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, it talks about, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Before he said, um, he said, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You know, dead people don't own anything. I never forget Dr. Gray gave that illustration one time about somebody who was dead. He said, he said okay, you're going to pretend to be dead. And he put a guy, you know, from the congregation, he laid him down, you're dead. And the guy had a real nice watch. He said, give me that watch. And the guy's like, I ain't giving you my watch. He said, you're dead. 
You don't care if I take your watch. You don't care if I take your wallet. You don't care if I take the shirt off your back. You don't care because you're dead. Pe dead people don't care about stuff of this earth, stuff that, that uh, we wear, food, all that stuff. They don't care about that. And this story teaches us much more about Christian living and levels of faith um, through these passages. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's a surrender more than just, oh, okay, well, you just got to give your offering and everything's going to be okay. And um, your level of living directly applies to your level of giving. Now, let me give you some levels of giving, and I'm, I'm going to, we're definitely not going to get to the next section, but just, just follow along with me. The lowest level of giving, I, I, I labeled it four levels. You may be able to come up with different levels of, of living and giving. The lowest level of Christian living or faith is selfishness. I call it the self-life. Um, though you may be saved, you still live your life doing your thing. You obey what you want. You give when you want. Sometimes you give, sometimes you don't give. But basically, you're taking care of number one. You're making sure you get what you want. You, you have, you know, you, if it's a choice between doing something for somebody else, uh, something somebody else needs, or being a blessing to a missionary, or something like that, and your expensive hobby, you're going to choose your expensive hobby every time because you're selfish. You, you, it's the, it's the self-life. That's the lowest level of Christian living. The second level of Christian living or faith is mere obedience or submission. In other words, you, you know the Bible teaches that you need to give, and you go back to the Old Testament law, and the Old Testament law talks about tithing, and you say, okay, well, that's all I got to do. I, I'm just going to give. I'm going to give that bare minimum. And um, you find out what that bare minimum is, and you submit to it. And you're doing the commanded things. And I always use this verse in regards to that attitude. When you say, well, this is what Jesus told me to do, and I'm doing it. And sometimes people expect like an attaboy or a pat on the back when they do the commanded things. But Jesus said in Luke 17, we studied it several months back. He said, so likewise ye, when, you, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. In other words, don't, don't, do, don't expect, you know, uh, pray an attaboy or whatever for doing the commanded thing, the bare minimum. And so that's the next level. Um, the third level of Christian living or faith is sacrifice. And by the way, um, you know, the people in that second level, they may tithe, but they don't give offerings above the tithe. Um, or they may just give like a, you know, a consistent, steady offering. Um, the next level of Christian living or faith is sacrifice. At first, by the way, you may be a little bit hesitant. But eventually you get to the place where you're happy about it. Um, the Bible talks about being a cheerful giver. The Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Your heart eventually follows your treasure. But you, you believe God wants you to sacrifice. You trust God and you sacrifice. And eventually you get to where you're cheerful about it. You're not giving grudgingly. And um, that's the third level of giving. The final level of Christian living, and I'm not there, is surrender, when I'm talking about total surrender. And really, if you think about it, it's not really Christian living at all. It's actually dying to self. This widow from our text, she was living there, dying to self. She gave everything to God. She had nothing left over. I, I give you an illustration. In my wallet, if I had $10 in my wallet, if I'm at the first level of, of uh, giving, the, the, the selfishness level, the self-life, I don't give any of it. It's mine. I need it. It's $10. I, I got to buy lunch tomorrow. I got to get coffee at Wawa or Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks or whatever it is. I, I, I have needs. I got to make sure my needs are met. I'm not giving anything. Level two I'm, I'm going to do the bare minimum. Okay, I know I'm supposed to give. I want God to bless me, so I'm going to give that dollar. And I'm, I'm going to do that. That's level two. Level three is you'll, you'll give the dollar, and maybe you'll throw an extra dollar in, or maybe even an extra two dollars. You're, you're learning to sacrifice. Level four is you give the wallet. And you say to God, this is yours. Whatever you want, 
it's yours. If you want my wallet, you want my house, you want my children, whatever you want, God, you're God. I'm completely and totally surrendered to you, and I'll give you anything you ask. That's total surrender. And, and I would have to say it's a, it's a very, very small percentage of Christianity that ever gets there. But that is the complete spirit-filled life. That is the life that is totally yielded and surrendered. Now, sometimes that may happen because a person just voluntarily gives that. But sometimes that happens as a result of God stripping some things away from people. And again, it may be that God is bringing us through a period where we really begin to realize what matters in life. When we're not really all that concerned about all these material things that we enjoy, we're starting to think more about heaven. I got to tell you, through this pandemic, I've been thinking a lot about future things, the end times. Is this the end? Is this Christ, Christ's return? Is this the pestilence, the, the, uh, the, the one world, God, all that stuff? I've been thinking about all that stuff. I don't know if it is or not. I just know it caused me to kind of reevaluate and maybe even hit the reset button a little bit on my life and what really matters. And so, again, the clothes on your back, you know, the, I mean, you need clothes. It keeps you warm and all that stuff, but you don't necessarily need to spend a fortune on it. Um, you know, the car you drive, the house you live in, all those things are nice, but they're not necessary. I mean, you don't have to have the best of the best of the best, but what really matters is eternity. And we really need to start setting our eyes on eternity. This widow woman, now she was probably older. Widows typically, not always, but typically are older. She was probably closer to eternity. Maybe when she was younger, she didn't think the same way she thinks now. But here in this passage of Scripture, she's thinking about God. She's thinking about eternity. All right, we're going to stop there. Uh, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for um, the example of this woman in the Bible who had nothing, but she gave everything. And she had nothing left over. God, I pray that you would help us to be more like her. And I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, suggesting that all of us should sell every possession that we have and dump it into a church's bank account or a missionary's bank account or give it to the poor or anything like that. But I am saying that we need to be willing to make whatever sacrifice you want us to make and be willing to surrender anything because everything ultimately belongs to you. We own nothing, even our lives. It all belongs to you. And God, we need to recognize that. And we need to be willing to give things up, perhaps so you don't have to strip them from us. And so God, I pray you'd help us to see that. And, Lord, I pray you just bless our people. Help our people. God, Lord, many are suffering. Uh, many are out of work. There's, there's all kinds of difficult trials. We're all going through different things. But, God, we have to just trust that you are bringing us to the other side of this thing. And God, I pray you'd help us to see what you're trying to teach us through this. Help us to be the ambassadors that we need to be. The lost world, they don't have you, God. And help us to show them Christ. And, Father, I pray they would see a great testimony, a great example of Christ through us. Lord, help us with that. Father, if there's anybody that's watching this live stream that, or, or maybe watching the, the rebroadcast later that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, God, I pray that today would be the day, that this time would be the time that they would receive the Lord Jesus Christ. God, that they would realize they're a sinner, but they would realize how much you love them. You sent Jesus to die on the cross for their sins. And Jesus paid the price for their sins. He paid their eternal punishment, penalty for their sins. And all we need to do is place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're willing to turn from our sins and turn to the Savior in faith, the Bible says he'll save us. He'll take us to heaven when we die. I'm so thankful that 30 years ago I called upon the name of the Lord and got saved. And God, if there's anybody out there that's watching this that needs Christ, God, I pray that you'd save them today. Father, I pray that you'd bless, Lord. Pray you give us a good rest of the week. Bring us all back to church on Sunday. Bless the 
the prayer meetings uh, for the rest of the week and the Friday meeting, the victorious thinking. I just watch over and protect our church family. God, we pray you be with us now. For it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Let me just say this before we sign off, that um, if you need to uh, contact us, please just by all means hit that response button or go to Facebook and leave a comment, call me, uh, whatever the need might be. If you need somebody to talk to, uh, if you need help with anything, just let us know. We're here to help. And uh, thanks for joining us. Praise the Lord. I've started out to win this race, to serve the Lord and look upon his face. Sometimes the way's been long and the road's been rough. But there's one thing for sure, I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley and I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes and knocking, showing me an easier way. I stand right flat on my feet, I lift my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. Old Job was a man who was tempted in every way. The devil took his family, he lay sick night and day. His wife came a saying, curse God, you've had enough. Job said, you talk like a foolish woman, I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley and I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easier way, I stand right Flat on my feet, I lift my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. That devil, he will tempt you and fill you with strife. He'll make you sick and tired, even try to take your life. But just look up to Jesus and say, Lord, in you I'll trust. The Lord will say, move on, Satan, she's got her mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley and I drink from the bitter cup, when the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easier way, I stand right Flat on my feet, I lift my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. I stand right flat on my feet, I lift my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up.